Today, we will be time traveling back to the PlayStation 1 era, the era of incredibly choppy 3D graphics, the time when dinosaurs were artificially reawoken from death in movies, when Jurassic Park was actually a really good movie and not your regular action flick. Oh boy, I do miss those times, so let's not waste any more of our precious time, let's do this. And today's dinosaur caretaker on the grill is no other than the newly early access release Dino Trauma. Developed and published by Phobia Interactive and this being their first game from this two people team. Now my dinosaur hunting friends, I will be taking you to Eastern Europe, and more specific, a research center loaded with dinosaurs in Eastern Europe. So as I said, the game is set in a secret laboratory somewhere in Eastern Europe. Don't you repeat yourself, you know that? Where gore, dinosaurs and broken things are a common thing. Mmm, video game gore. To me, inspecting the gore in a video game is like inspecting a painting for a painter. It is wonderful when done right. So, in this game you play as a scientist, who has to fight his way through hordes of prehistoric creatures to escape the lab. The story is very simple, and not very effective at all. But it is a great excuse to shoot some dinosaurs. The story, it's mostly told through small iPad looking things with text on them from the people that used to work there. Before they, what I'm guessing, got eaten. And I have yet to come across one of these notes rocking more than 5 sentences. Meaning, they are very easy to read and follow along with, with some typos here and there just as it should be from a two people team. However, when it comes to the story, nothing really baffled me and the story never stuck to me. I did not care for it at all, honestly. Which is a little bit of a shame, it could definitely have been written in a more immersive and memorable way considering the nature of the game being so slow and immersive. So the story is no highlight in this game. But the real question is, can we find a highlight in the gameplay of this? Let's find out. Dum 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 here comes the dino, I mean gameplay. So as I said, this is more leaning into the slow paced immersive type game where you carefully look around each corner in case a dino is waiting to eat you. Shit I'm almost getting scared just saying that. But apart from shooting dinos, there is a lot of puzzles, keys and electric boxes that you have to solve, find and shoot to progress. And more times than I'm comfortable with, I got badly stuck in this game. And that was not because the levels are overly big, because they are not, they are rather small in size, but because there's no explanation to the puzzles making some of them very tedious to solve. You have to go by trial and error, like this one right here, I had to click 3 times on the same spot for it to transform into a corner, and how the F was I supposed to know that? And to top it off, every time you fail you have to wait 10 seconds to give it another try. And I mean at least give me how the controls functions to the puzzle, because I literally cannot understand anything, okay? I really need help. I don't understand. I don't understand, bitch. And while every single puzzle was unique in its mechanics, none of them had any explanation whatsoever. And then we have the keys. What made them so hard to find was the fact that all of a sudden the game introduced a new hatch, or a new door, or a new thing to shoot that had not been present in the game before, making it really really hard to actually figure out that this was the way I was supposed to go. Like this hatch in the floor, I thought it was just a prop in the environment, not something I could actually open and go through. What's this you fucking piece of shit? What's this? I had been backtracking and running around like a headless chicken for nearly an hour before I realized that I could open this hatch. And lastly, the goddamn electric boxes. Oh god, the electric boxes. They are hard to spot due to them being so freaking small and the PSX style graphics. Sometimes you can't even tell the difference between an electric box and just some prop box. 
and to sprinkle into the madness, they can be placed just about anywhere. And then all of a sudden, you have this thing, it says that it needs power, so naturally I went looking for a fucking electric box, for what I felt like an eternity, when all it needed was a flip on the switch right fucking next to it. God damn, this game is driving me insane. Okay, so no highlight in the puzzling or progression part of the game, although I have to say that the level design is quite clever and well executed. They are pretty small in size, but very effective, making them feel a lot bigger than they actually Actually are. But at the same time not that hard to navigate, it's very easy to learn the overall layout of a level. Until you have to find a secret hatch or an electric box that you just can't for the freaking life of you find. But there is something that makes the combat feel very, very out of touch. Now when it comes to the combat, it is rather enjoyable for the most part. The game is not really hard, as long as you take it slow and easy. And the dinos, they do make a lot of damage, but so do you. So it's easy to one shot most of the dinos, if close enough with the shoddy. But that means you have to take a risk of getting close to them and then them dealing a lot of damage to you. There is a total of seven weapons in the game that are all extremely unique from each other and they are pretty good at different things. The pistol for example is great versus rats and smaller dinos. The shotgun is great against charging medium sized dinos and the crossbow it's great for long shots. And they all offer alternative fire modes that are some of the craziest I have ever seen. The pistol, it can be turned into a fully automatic pistol. And the shoddy, it can shoot three shots at a time. And I have no idea how that makes any sense at all and it kind of broke the immersion for me a bit. But hey, they're dinos in the game so not everything has to make sense I guess. Nothing makes fucking sense. Life makes no sense. The animations are to say the least incredibly stiff in this game. Everything from the dinos to the overall weapon animations, making the game feel very, very arcadey. I have seen a ton of 90s games with much smoother animation than what this one boasts, and that unfortunately breaks the immersion even more, as well as make the game detract from what I presume it wants to be, the slow-paced immersive horror shooter. Since the combat feels so arcadey, I more often than not found myself jumping around like I was the doom guy killing dinos, like there was no tomorrow, but instead of heavy metal tunes in the background, it was Swedish techno. And that just felt so out of place in this game. With some well needed animation work and polish not only to the weapons and enemies, but to the game's movement as well. If done right, this could turn into a great Dino Crisis first person shooter. But as is now, it unfortunately does not succeed. But there is actually something that really deserves some praise in this game. Let's jump into it. Ba -ba, da -di -di -bum -ba. That was supposed to resemble the audio segment of this review. Did I nail it? Leave a comment down below let me know and if i did nail it leave a like subscribe send me an email send me a letter ring on my door knock on my window and kiss on my forehead but please do let me know if i nailed it now i will mix in the graphics in this audio segment as well because yeah why not So, what I want to highlight is the atmosphere of the game. The ambience, the music and the graphics, especially the environments, really sets a dark and gritty and scary tone for the game. That it actually nails perfectly. The most immersive part of the game was at the start, exploring the unknown, not knowing what lies in the next corner, opening doors and carefully look around with your flashlight. But unfortunately, the game does not hold that feeling for very long. About three maps in, you start exploring more open areas. You come to learn that the combat is very arcadey and thus making the dinos a lot less scarier. I went from getting jump scared every 15 minutes or so to nothing. So in conclusion, I think the game really nails the look of the PS1 era. With some animation work and movement overhaul, it would look and feel great for a PS1 style game. The guns, they need to be less arcadey and feel more like every shot counts. That would heighten the fear factor and really help bring the fantastic atmosphere of the first hour playing the game much further into the game. Go! No, you threw off my groove! The puzzles, they need a hint here and there to make them less tedious and some kind of objectives would not hurt one bit. There is literally three ways to progress. Solve a mini puzzle, find a key or shoot an electric box and you never know which one you're supposed to do because there is no objective. 
and that could have been elevated a lot further as the game focuses so heavily on it you will be doing those three things a lot more than actually fighting and exploring in the game now the game is in early access right now with one episode containing eight maps available and they promise to bring two more episodes into the game with more enemies upgrades and weapons and there are no upgrades in the game right now, so that's a feature to come. And I will make sure to check out the 1.0 release once it's out and see if it has improved in any way or been polished. But before the 1.0 release, make sure to check out these amazing boomer shooters. 